annotations. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chaos Community Call. It's good to see people here on the call. Good to see new faces as well. So welcome if you're new to this call. So if you are new to this call, uh, just kind of an overview. This is our weekly community call, and we have a lot of other working groups that do a lot of work. And we use this call a lot um, just to kind of talk about what's been going on across the project you know, in the other working groups, because I know everybody can't be everywhere all at once. Uh, so this is to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, if somebody could, as people join, could you drop the minutes in the chat for me as well? A cooler at a bar. I like that. A promo code. Love it. Europe's final countdown album. Like the song? Yeah, yeah. The, like the, the final you know, countdown? The, that the, epic the song? Album. Yeah, I wanted from a local TV station. You could send them a postcard, and they had this video show, and you'd send them this postcard, and if they drew your name out of a hat, you'd get an album. My sister won a Debbie Gibson album. I think Final Countdown is the way I'd go on that one. That's just such an <laughs> epic song. You probably listened to it like a hundred times in a row. <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, a mushroom hunting course. <laughs> That is like, so I, as a mushroom hunter myself, I have no idea that there was such a thing as a mushroom hunting course. So. <laughs> well, it was like a, it was like a guided tour through uh, through through some local uh, mm. spots. Yeah, yeah. Love it. did you find mushrooms? Yeah, I found some interesting ones for sure. Yeah, yeah, oh, right, right on. All right, uh, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks for for putting your stuff in there. Um, I did want to let people know that um, we are at least temporarily bringing together. So we have across the chaos project, we have what are called context context groups. And these are groups that are um, they, they exist to help different people in different contexts think about metrics and metrics models without necessarily in software, without necessarily being involved in the deep level details of what goes on in the chaos project. So, for example, there are times where we have to actually publish, you know, author and publish a metric or author and publish a metric model, which is a collection of metrics. There's kind of some some details into getting that done. These context groups are meant to kind of abstract people from that lower level work or that kind of work um, and just get them to think about the metrics that are important in their particular context. We have a couple different working groups or I'm sorry, context groups, um, the corporate OSPOs. Uh, is one of those context groups. We work with the to-do group. Uh, we also have the university context group and a science context group. So scientific software context group. The university context group was working just with that, open source program offices inside of universities, to which there's uh, kind of an emerging trend here. And uh, scientific software, uh, we were working a lot with folks from uh, NumPy, kind of the num NumFocus world. And so there would seem to be quite a bit of overlap between these two groups. And instead of having two meetings, I think for the time being, we're just going to kind of bring those two context groups together and see what kind of overlap there is. It seemed to make sense also logistically. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Sustain, the Sustain OSS effort. They also are starting an academic um, working group that kind of focuses on universities and science as well. So in, in an effort to kind of work better or work more aligned with sustain, uh, this makes sense. We uh, brought this up in the scientific software context group this week and it was well received. So we're gonna, we're basically just logistically, we're gonna stop the scientific software meeting time and just move everything over to, to university. All right, uh, so that's just FYI for people. Um, any questions or comments on that? Okay. Um, the, the next thing that I wanted to put on the agenda is, I, this is just me thinking about something on a cool morning this morning, but, um, do we, did you know if we have any way of kind of thinking about metrics or metrics models, um, in a way that, that would be tied with a company releasing intellectual property? 
or you know something internal to a company that would be released at a foundation and kind of the how we would think about metrics and metrics models along that path. Does anybody do has, have we had this conversation at all? Everything seems to be about like existing communities. So you know, is this the is this the taking of a piece of software that was not open sourced and making yeah. it open sourced or is yeah. this because I think that's a different path than the conception of a new open source project from the start. Um, and the questions would be different. Okay. Well, do you want to? I mean, I think, I, you know, when you release it, when you decide you're going to create a new open source project, I think you can, if you're experienced, I think a lot of foundations and other organizations sort of handle that. It seems, I, I think when companies release software that they've already built into open source, Sometimes that works really well. I mean, I think there's a very nice pipeline, for example, at Google for doing that. I, I think in uh, smaller open source firms that can be kind of uneven. Um, but the questions I've heard asked most often relate to licensing um, when it comes to intellectual property and copyright. Okay. Yeah, done. Yeah, I mean, I think... I. I think it depends a little bit on the foundation, but um, a lot of the foundations sort of assume that you're moving an existing open source project into a foundation. Okay. So that's kind of how the CNCF works. That's how a lot of the, a lot, but not all of the Linux foundation projects um, end up in, in the Linux foundation. They're existing open source projects, usually run by a company and then um, contributed to a foundation. Okay. I think it's, it's, I, I think that that's the more common use case. That might be my bias working mostly in the CNCF ecosystem. Yep. But I think it's become a relatively rare for people to take a proprietary product. And as they're, um, as they're, you know, like the first, I don't know, I don't see a lot of projects now releasing it into open source as part of putting it into a foundation. Okay. They're usually, I think, existing open source projects. I think that used to be a lot more common before. Like I know a lot of Apache projects ended up in the Apache Foundation that way, um, as, but I'm not as, sure if that's- It's just as internal and then released into the foundation. Yeah, I know VMware did a couple of those um, a while ago, way before I worked for them, but yeah. they, they took internal projects and as, as a part of open sourcing, it put it into the foundation. Okay. In my research, I have observed that uh, a lot of companies did that, uh, especially which they were not maintaining it. So they tried to release it and let the open source community maintain it. One of the strategy that many of the companies have interviewed, especially a lot of people that especially highlighted this aspect of it. Okay. Uh, that's generally considered pretty, pretty bad practice, though, and I think Apache is one of the only foundations that will take that type of project. Or, or even I have observed that, uh, uh, like, some someone, uh, some companies have started the open source project and then they release their intellectual property to that project and let it continue on over the course of time. That proper uh, that uh, technology has been totally revamped, but this is how it initiated. They started the project release intellectual property to the project to continue to start growing and then uh, evolve over the period of time. Okay, so the if the tr if the trend is kind of this now, you know what I mean, moving, so an, an organization, from what I'm understanding, a more common trend right now is for an organization to release IP as their own open source project, go through that effort. And from there, that open source project could necessarily be contributed to a foundation which would support that project. I would say it's a little bit different than that because um, okay. an open source, uh, the IP is the is the the thing yeah. that I um, I think isn't isn't quite right because okay. when when VMware releases an open source project, VMware yeah. still owns the intellectual property. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not a lawyer, but like they still own like the trademarks and um, the legal stuff associated with that project. Okay. Um, if it's one of their open source projects. So there's no real way to give that to a community um, okay. because, because there's, if, if, unless the community is, unless it's a nonprofit organization or another company, there has to be somebody to transfer those legal assets to. I don't okay. think you can just, 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, menu. I would do that to a, to a community. Um, okay. But that's what occurs. the other thing I've seen is that like the, the legal stuff owned by an individual. Um, so like Lena Storvalds actually still owns the Linux trademark. It's administered by the Linux foundation, but, um, but he actually owns the, the trademark for, okay. So okay. it has to be owned. The, the assets have to be owned by somebody. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think it, okay. the cases where trademarks have actual value are, I mean, there's the top of the list things that we're aware of like Linux, but there's a lot of trademarks that have less value in open source. So, okay. So is there, is there value for us in thinking about the metrics that we would care about as even just step one, irrespective of the trademarks at the moment, but as a company releases or um, builds community around a project that they're working on, number one. And I think the answer is kind of yes on that. I think we have talked about that. Um, and then two, perhaps moving that project to a foundation, the, the complexity <laughs> of that. Do we care about that second one at all? Would a company care about that? Or a foundation? Or are they the same? Is it just kind of this ongoing set of metrics that we've always talked about? I would say they're not the same, but I'd love to hear other people's thoughts here, just in terms of like, you care about different things when it's under your company versus when it's in a foundation. And I think as we've moved a lot of projects into foundations like the CNCF and that just sort of changed the composition and investment levels um, in a way that I think it changes what you care about from a metrics perspective. And I think there's definitely been things that we look at as part of the transition um, that were different than when this is all managed internally versus all under a foundation. Um, again, different people care about different things. And I think there's also value in looking at the metrics in the transition to see are we actually abiding by the community values in this transition is that you are changing from something that might be more company centric to a more community managed model. And I think that takes time. Um, also my entire screen froze, so I don't know. If you can still hear Your video is frozen as well, but we still hear you. Yeah, we can still okay. hear you. Okay. <laughs> that was really distracting and I lost my train no, of thought. Yeah, we can still hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so plus one, everything Sophia said. I mean, yeah. I, I do think that they, they are different metrics. I do think that they would be interesting to measure. I mean, it's things like, so a lot of foundations when they look at, so they don't accept, CNCF doesn't accept every project that wants to get in, right? There's like, there's like criteria, criteria. I was just in a meeting where they were talking about which projects would get in and which ones wouldn't. Um, and it's things like, you know, do they, do they have contributors from multiple companies? Do they have a, you know, do they have a governance? How how mature is their governance model? Um, and some of those things matter more than more than others. And they're not, none of them are necessarily deal breakers, but they are, there are things that I think a lot of foundations look at when they're looking at bringing projects in. Okay. There's certainly, um, I don't know if you saw this at VMware, Don, you don't need to comment, but I think there's also a lot of aspiration to build communities around open source projects within some companies. And that aspiration isn't always realized when you go back and look at the commits, it still ends up with a pretty small elephant factor mm -hmm. on projects that are not substantial like Linux or Kubernetes. Oh, that's, that's absolutely true. I think. Yeah. Does the... thinks it's a great idea to open source their project and then they you know, and, and then for lots of reasons, they they fizzle out and don't don't go anywhere. Managing the community is hard. hard. Yeah, community. Yeah. <laughs> um, Don, with the CNCF, is there a period of time where, um, after the admission criteria are kind of looked at, where there's a point where that stops? Like you, you passed, you're in. We don't look anymore. You know. Um, yes and no, like inactive projects do get archived if there's really nobody, nobody working on them. Okay. Um, so that's, that's one path out. There's also within the CNCF a path up. So most projects come in, um, at the sandbox level mm -hmm. and then there's an incubating level and then a graduated level. So we kind of expect projects, um, you know, if they're successful to eventually apply to become an incubating project. And that comes okay. with a whole set of 
more more rigorous criteria and then even more criteria on top of that for a graduated yeah, so program. certainly a, a deeper reflection on whatever those yeah. might and be. and they also within the cncf every project I, I think every project does an annual report so okay. that might just be incubating to graduate it i i don't remember for sure if we do okay. that for sandbox. okay um well this is really helpful thank you uh, i just wanted to see if there was interest here and i really appreciate the feedback um i think maybe it's something to think about um, just kind of that, I like that idea of this transition, this transition point between the two and kind of what the things you might've looked for before and what, what are the things you might look for after we're kind of right at that, that point of inflection. So thank you for that. Um, oh yeah, so, go ahead. That's the last thought is I think Don also mentioned, and if this is true for other foundations, that there are specific metrics that are already being used and might be published too on the mm -hmm. foundation side. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I think on the company side, it might be a little bit more opaque, um, but okay. that can actually, that can be a, maybe a helpful reference point to start with is to look at what those criteria are for both exception into the foundation as well as graduation, um, or like, I guess CNCF has multiple levels, but Apache also has incubation and graduation as well. Yeah. Um, and so I think it might be interesting just to see what, what metrics foundations care about because that actually might be ref information you could go look up. That's yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to maybe, um, yeah, to look at that, not just for like Apache and the CNCF, but also like Eclipse, what's what's their criteria for the projects. I think it'd be interesting to see what what metrics they're already, or what criteria they're already using. We could build some metrics around that. Mm -hmm. I'd be uh, interested to see how they're different. All right, cool. Uh, that was great. I really appreciate it. Uh, okay. Any last comments on that? Thank you again. Uh, OK, so I think one of the things we were talking about, Sean, I'm kind of putting you on the spot a time and time and time again on this issue. But um, we, so I just think we it's That's really an issue about it. Uh, yeah, so, it's, a, it's a pretty useful activity that we're going to start working on here. Yeah, so um, um, just to yeah. give you, you want to talk about it, Sean, or do you want me to introduce it? I mean. I think I think um, we talked about it last week, maybe, and the week before. So, I mean, the idea is that um, we want to try to. We've been working on this for a number of years, but we want to try to build more community um, into the software side of chaos. And so, one of those tools is Augur. And as a first initiative on this new strategy for building community around software, um, we're going to engage people in building um, APIs that fulfill chaos metric requirements. From Augur, many already exist, and um, they haven't been mapped to the current um, chaos metric that they correspond with. Um, so that's a documentation activity, and then many don't exist and need to be uh, created f within Augur. And so there's a a pretty defined path that we've kind of started to lay down for uh, how to do that. And I'm looking to schedule like a every other week meeting starting next week. <clears throat> Um, on the chaos calendar um, to address software community. And so that could take a very broad view. It doesn't have to be just Augur, um, but the Augur API is like the first little project with a, that we'll take on um, in, that, in that effort. That's kind of it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well said. Um, so I think the the... I think this can lead to a couple of things. We talked about this in the metrics model working group meeting a little bit earlier today uh, with folks like Yahui, um, that by developing the endpoints mm -hmm. for Augur and having these, it makes a lot of sense just from the perspective of having our metrics and metrics models kind of architected into the chaos software. That makes a lot of sense. Like we should try to get that mapping done. And so I think this this first set of goals is to kind of kind of do that um yeah exactly yeah and th and these meetings i don't think they're meant to be you had implied that they you don't want them to be like hackathon meetings but no, we we've done that and um i think i think uh i think it was helpful to the people who participated but um the participation wasn't even and it um it didn't lead it didn't lead to community uh, around the okay. software. So uh, try something different. Yep. Um, and, th and then what came up earlier today too is kind of stemming from, from these endpoints. 
um, could, could, if this is down the road, this, it could provide people with access to the auger data. Yeah, I mean, and I think remix yeah. it in ways that could be meaningful in their own particular data science need spaces. Yeah, no, I, I think, um, you know, we're certainly, that's, that's something that I think Augur can do in a place that Augur can sit in, mm -hmm. in, in the chaos community. Um, we, we do have a public instance that anyone can add repos to. And so I think the, the only thing that we would really need to add to our API that we don't have is a, some kind of rate limiting and also, um, a way of sort of letting people submit anything that they want to search for data on, but also not let people, um, like browse the whole data because we don't want to get in trouble with GitHub or GitLab or any of the platform vendors for repurposing data, right? We want to provide yep. it as a research service and as a service to open source companies, but we're not, you know, this is just a community goal. It's not, we need to make it clear, I think, that we're not trying to eat anyone's lunch or anything like that. Yeah. And that we're not, I think in that latter part, like over, we've talked about this, like overextending ourselves. Exactly. That that it's a service that we we provide and people use and expect to be there and expect to be always there. Yeah. <laughs> we don't well, have the resources to really maintain that sometimes. No. And it's um yeah, and as Grimoire Lab knows, you know, it takes costs money and, and takes effort to service people and um make sure customers and users are happy. So yeah, there's a certain amount of that that can happen on a entirely open source project like Augur right yep. now but we do have we do have some um you know we're, we're getting some engineering support from red hat and um some other enterprises so i okay. mean i think it's interest in in supporting the tool okay would be great too because in these meetings that you would have like these are the kind of things we can talk through in these meetings yeah. i'm just trying to bring some of that here so people can see what that conversation could look like oh i appreciate that thank you uh, i'm too yeah. humble to put it on the agenda so perfect <laughs> Yeah, I keep putting it on the agenda because I love that that first meeting sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. So let's see. We have a couple more things on the agenda. We have, I see somebody added one here at the bottom, which is great. Um, I did just want to say for Open Source Summit Europe, I know a number of you are, are going. I didn't put all the titles here, but this is a list of what appears to be chaos and chaos related talks at uh, Open Source Summit Europe, which is great. It's honestly to have four talks uh, is really nice from my perspective. That's really nice representation. Uh, Daniel Esquerdo, I think is doing the most. <laughs> I think he's on three out of four of these talks. So thank you, Daniel, if you're on. Um, so anyway, click on those and, and take a look. I know uh, Don is on a couple, I believe. I think you have a talk and a panel, uh, if I'm not mistaken, so. Um, so, you know, thanks for everybody for participating in Open Source Summit Europe, and I hope you have a great time. It's it's next week. I mean, it starts Thursday. I uh, know it. No, it starts earlier than that, doesn't it? Is it next week? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of starts on Monday. I think the main events Tuesday through Thursday. Yeah. So, um, I think should. What do you think about meetings for next week? I, I think. We should still probably have them. I don't think a ton of people are going, like it, enough to not have them. So I, my guess is that we'll just continue these meetings. That's, that's um, I would, yeah, I, I don't think there'll be enough people there to not have the meetings. I know some people will be there and won't be at the meetings and that's okay. Yep. I know there's a plan to have uh, a sustained OSS academic thing um, during the university time. And I think we're gonna call into the university yes. meeting. Um, I do yep, wonder exactly. about the OSPO. So, I do wonder about the OSPO working group, since I think a lot of the OSPO people will be at okay in Bilbao. Okay, that's fair. We could always just cancel that one and then yeah. pick it up in two weeks. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fair. Um, okay. Great. Uh, I'll reach out to Gary and just see what he thinks on that as well. Uh, I always like the well, not always. I'd like to point out the. Open Source Summit Europe is a chaos event 
gold event badge recipient. So it's always great to see. I'd like to just always say thanks to the to the Linux Foundation events team for always going through the process of taking time to badge all of their events. They've really helped us uh, think through the metrics that we use for badging events. Uh, and it's just, it's really great to, to work with everybody at the LF events team. They're really just a great group yeah. of people. Um, and I think we're probably at about 120 events badged at this point, which is great. Um, and then I did want to point out that on Thursday from two in the afternoon to four in the afternoon, uh, open Euler, which I've learned is said differently, um, is going to be hosting a workshop. And these are the, the proposed structures for that workshop. I talked a little bit with Yahui today because he'll be also at that workshop. And I think the intention is to, and I did reach out to Daniel as well, to kind of just by committee talk about these things in the workshop. So it's only two hours and I think it'd be pretty easy to just kind of have everybody uh, lead around these. So I, I'm gonna post you who is putting together um, a title for the workshop and a small abstract. And I'm gonna share with the LF events team to try to get it on the calendar. Um, so everybody's welcome to join. Oh yeah, everybody's welcome to join. Speaking of joining, I did want to tell you too, if you're not actually going to be attending Open Source Summit Europe, uh, you can just follow this link to the Linux Foundation YouTube channel and everything is there. It's free. And as far as I know, they're streaming everything, not just a select group of things. So for example, like Don, your talk, I is that like, is that going to be streamed? It seems like it is from the way I was reading it or the yeah. The last several OSSNEs, they've tried to stream everything. Um, I don't remember. I wasn't at OSS Europe last year, so I don't know if that's new there or not. My quick read implied that it was, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think that's what they did for the past ones. So I'm assuming that that they'll do that again. Okay. Um, and as far as I understand, too, you can just go right to this YouTube channel. There's no, like... Um, registration required for virtual attendance. You can just go right there and, and watch. So that's great. Uh, all right, so the last thing on the agenda is Scout Flow. Uh, I'm not sure who put that on there. Uh, like yeah, talk about uh, that? I've added the agenda. So yeah. let me just give a brief what, 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 what exactly I'm gonna talk about this. So we got in touch with Chaos uh, and George like six or two, seven months back. While I was, you know, researching more about open source, commercial open source and everything. So just to give you a story of how everything started, right? So uh, we were running an agency uh, last year where we tried to use various open source tools. And during that, we came across various issues or you know challenges in the in the space. Firstly, being getting you know the right tool discovered. If, even if you find the right tool, getting it deployed, self-hosted on your infrastructure, uh, it's kind of hard for someone like me who is not into DevOps, not a much techie. So during this journey, we are like, hey, hey can we solve this issue for the community as well as for the businesses who are looking to, you know, adopt open source and replace their current proprietary stack, right? So we are like, okay, let's first start with a marketplace. So that's how Scoutflow came up and we built an open source marketplace where we listed some commercial open source. Now we are like, why only commercial open source, right? So it was mostly, like, let us start with some niche, uh, solve for the niche. And then eventually we can expand to all open source. There are a few products which, you know, are like, have great potential to be in the commercial part, but still are into uh, the free open source space. So this is how we are, you know, going to expand to, from commercial to this kind of product to all uh, free open source software. So uh, my agenda to you know join this meeting was to because I really love what Chaos is doing with Grimoire Lab and Agor. I have studied these two of your product and I, I totally loved it because I've gone end to end with the all the um, matrix that you are gonna study on the open source. And this is something I feel that if we can provide this evaluation to the uh, visitors or someone who wants to adopt open source tool, how easy it will be for them to make a decision. And how is it for the open source founders to portray their product? So it's like, you know, uh, 
मतलब शिफ्टिंग फ्रॉम कॉम्प्लेक्स डॉक्यूमेंटेशन टू लॉट ऑफ टेक्स्ट हेवी वेबसाइट्स एंड एवरीथिंग टू सिंपल इवेल्यूशन स्कोर और डैशबोर्ड तो दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू नो वी आर एमिंग टू यू नो वर्क विथ क्योस फॉर स्काउट लो वी ऑलरेडी हैड अ मीटिंग विथ जॉर्ज वेयर वी यू नो शोड वॉट एग्जैक्टली वेयर यू नो डू विथ दिस प्रोडक्ट and we came we joined this call with the same agenda because i heard a lot about this community that how support you guys are just to you know get a dis- insightful discussions going on get more feedback and yeah that that's pretty much it uh thanks uh georg do you want to you you were in the meeting do you want to add anything yeah so the way that i see um chaos and scout flow is that uh scout flow can be a a front end a user interface for people looking at using an open source project using an open source a, a commercial offering for a commercial uh using commercial offering for an open source tool and in that evaluation we talk a lot about here in chaos how we use metrics to determine is this a good project a good community to rely on to build on to use that tool and if we can work together to expose our project health metrics in the interface of scoutflow and, and that sounds like what scoutflow is already starting to work on and we can as a chaos community reflect on is this the most impactful metric to show is this the right way to calculate it or to show it and then even better if in the back end scoutflow is using augur or primore lab then i think we have a nice uh, synergy where where we have a nice way of working together on both technology and providing these metrics at a bigger scale the yeah, just to add to so that what uh, what we are planning to do is introduce a scoutflow health score mechanism uh, which is backed by a grimo lab or a gorp apis as well as open ssf api so open ssf again is a linux foundation uh, initiative so uh, what exactly we are doing is evaluating a open source tool on the basis of various metrics which mainly has security code quality maintenance support uh, community activeness business metrics and uh, to evaluate this we are using sources like agor and uh, grimo lab and open ssf getting the data running our algorithm on top of that to uh, assign a score to each evaluated uh, data and show it in form of graphical and uh, numeric values so basically setting up a benchmark for each kind of features so here uh, what we what exactly is uh, going to happen is a user who wants to onboard open source tool can skip through all the you know uh, data heavy and information part and directly uh, do a comparison between two product on the basis of in the score been distributed some um, breakdown among various matrices so this is something that we are you know trying to work with george and kios to introduce scoutflow health score metrics Does the is the marketplace up right now? Yes, the marketplace is up. I have uh, attached the link in the agenda, so I will. Uh... Agenda. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I just missed that. Yes. Yeah, I, I just said in chat. Marketplace is one of those words that I'm not sure I fully understand what that means is exactly. I, I don't. I don't have any opinions about it. I, I'm just kind of curious to understand. what would we what would be we what would we do would i just like register my projects like i do on the compass site and then get metrics from them and then no i think scoutflow you could tell me if i'm wrong but scoutflow provides open source alternatives for people to think about I yes see. so uh, then, it's basically a a a niche a vetted marketplace where we have been you know, shortlisted all the open source alternative to current proprietary stack so uh, just just for an example if you're using any uh, any um, if, for example you need a, a open source alternative to a current intercom intercom is a saas tool 
for uh, for communication and you need something which can be cheaper as well as uh, well backed by support of open source you can just come to scoutflow search intercom and you will be getting all the alternatives that intercom has for example uh, chatwood chatwood is a great alternative to the intercom currently so what you can do find such alternatives evaluate it through all the data on the information product videos and images you have and if you're more interested we have a feature called a sandbox so what exactly that means you can have a free trial without signing in or integrating any of your data just click on the sandbox go to the uh, already pre hosted uh, you know if you have the instance of product on our cloud get the you know, feel of how product is once you evaluated come to marketplace we again have our scoring mechanism in place you can go through the scores see what are the metrics that are evaluated does that match with your evaluation criteria as well once that is done you have a simple one click deployment available here as you can see deploy button been uh, on the market and here this is this is the time where you evaluated the tool you are confirmed that you know i'm sure that i'm going to use this tool now just click on the deploy and the tool is in your uh, cloud infra within few clicks within few minutes so this is a complete process which might take like few days or a week which you are trying to reduce it in few minutes of your hours so this is something what scoutlo atlas does as a marketplace so i am having uh, vedan who is the co-founder scoutlo in the call so like vedan jump in if you want to continue with this yeah i think i, I hey guys thanks for thanks for having us um, I, i'll keep it short because i'm sure the description has gone too long um so we we want to help with three major things one is to get a quick evaluation of which tool can be the perfect replacement to your proprietary stack uh, and with the sandbox that we have um, sandbox is a very simple way of getting a quick free trial without even self hosting an open source tool so we basically self host it in our infrastructure we remove all the barriers of actually using the tool so when you click on if um, whoever is sharing the screen matt can you can you toggle on sandbox on the left side awesome uh if you can click on any other sandboxes essentially it's like a it's a, it's a public demo environment yeah uh so if anyone is evaluating sentry they would have had to essentially self host it here they don't have to they can skip even adding their credit card or an email id and they can start utilizing it so that's the second step where you can quickly evaluate a tool with just dummy data and the third step is what scoutflow would help you do is uh you know self host it in your infrastructure even if you do not have like a devops background so this is a second product called scoutflow deploy um which will help you provide the infrastructure out of the box um um which is a kubernetes infrastructure and you can deploy it within within a single click so uh, that was a, sh a short description of the overall platform i hope it made sense so i get it now Yeah no I get I get it I get it okay. now. And so um, go ahead. No I think um there's lots of lots of possibilities here um for introducing people to open source. So I think that's exciting. So the the request the the conversation here with Scoutflow is is it simply like as I'm looking over here on the right side I can see stars forks and others. So there's a certain amount of information that you provide to potential users about in this case maybe just the repository you know um health like in quotes um but using either grimoire lab or agar on the back end with chaos metrics or metrics models to kind of provide a a richer description of the community behind the software is that correct that's correct so uh, we basically okay. want to help businesses uh, evaluate all of these metrics in like one single score so yeah. you can imagine that it can be just like a a numeric score given uh with a lot more details that they can go deeper into but it's purely backed by agor and you know I, I gotcha i gotcha so this is essentially what in this case what chaos is providing well or what the tools and metrics from chaos would provide is just uh richer services that scoutflow offers to better understand the choices that people okay Gotcha. Um okay, this is interesting. Um uh well, like where how what I don't know where you <laughs> are like thinking wise um it just in terms That's of right. like resources, you know, like we got to think through some of these things, I think. 
Sure. Uh, so we basically have like a formula in place in terms of what we really require from a data point perspective. And we've gone through the documentation and we're glad that a lot of the data points are already covered by Agor itself. Uh, and George told us about it. So we were, we were pretty happy after that. Uh, we, have, we, have, we will be doing like a quick evaluation of this and we'd love to get some support from your end in terms of doing like a quick POC with this. Um, what we can do is we can give you a couple of scores that we generate with our formula using Agor APIs. Um, and then get, uh, do a couple of back and forths there in terms of if there are any questions. Um, and then in the, the entire setup is going to be something that we are pretty new to. So that might be something that you can, if, if there's a way to help us out, that'll be really helpful. So I'm looking at Sean as the auger dude. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it just really, um, we should probably have a side conversation about what it is that you aim to do and what the oh, yeah. scope yeah. it might be. I think I think with Augur or Grimoire Lab, whatever tool you choose, I think something that's a public offering like this, you know, we should we should talk in a separate conversation probably about um how big you want to go and, and how you would scale that and whether you want to use an instance that we're hosting or whether you want to stand up your own. And if you do that, then just we could talk about the hardware requirements if yeah. you're going to do any kind of scale. For sure. Um, I think that that should be that should be perfect, Sean. Yeah. So um, I, I'll message you. And are you in are you in our Slack channel? Um, yes. Yeah, we do. Um, do you think do you think we can uh, if it's okay if we could add you to our Slack channel if that's okay or? Sure. Yeah, you can add me to a Slack channel, but I'll probably message you in the chaos one. Sure. Just because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be I got a, I got a lot of Slack channels. I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm that's a big curious if other people on this call have a reaction to this that they want to talk about or questions that they might have or thoughts, excitement, hesitation, whatever it might be. Oh, yeah, please be, please be candid with us. I think um, yeah. we'd, we'd love a candid feedback. I stuck some in the chat. That's really basic. Um, I see some things, I already see a license popping up on the right and others say other and not mm -hmm. the license type. Um, I know mm -hmm. there's been a slightly more controversy here, but of some license shifts away from open source licenses that are defined by OSI. So just if you are listing things here that are not under OSI approved licenses, then it should have some sort of acknowledgement of that. Um, you can use direct references from either OSI and SPDX also has a list as well. Um, there's something you can just reference. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, we will definitely get into it. Uh, I think we we do want to spend a lot more time on um, giving really good context behind these licenses as well, because we, when we spoke to businesses, I think they're struggling to just understanding the value behind any any specific license. So uh, that's also one loop that we'd love to close. Cool. Uh, I one of the one of my things that I just put out there too is if if this does have, kind of move forward, ask that you know you you both can contribute in the upstream to Augur or Grimoire Lab as you see things that, yeah, need to be addressed or changed. Um, and then like open and kind of open, like kind of what we're having here, like open and candid discussions about challenges around metrics or challenges around whatever it might be is really well received because putting the metrics into practice, um, kind of like as we had talked about the you know, the DEI badging, working with the Linux Events Foundation teams, like they've, they've had a lot of feedback for us because they're the ones that are often deploying the metrics and thinking mm -hmm. about them in practice. And yeah. when I say they've been great to work with, it's because they're giving us really great feedback on how we can make improvements in our own processes. Um, so I, that would be great, at least from my end as well. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. anytime someone tries to apply the, the things that we've built, it helps us to make them better. So, yep. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, once we deploy it, uh, we will be releasing this as well. And we'll uh, once everything works out, um, we'll be having like an alpha and a beta release. So whatever feedback we are getting from our our customers, our users about the score, I think that'll be really interesting for you know discussing yeah. over the score uh, yep. because they will be all business owners uh, looking at it for the first time. Yep, I agree. Okay, great. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, it yeah. was great. That was awesome. Uh, thank you. Any other comments or questions? I would like to um, also 
advertise the meeting that we have tomorrow for the data science group because we um, invited Scoutflow also to that meeting to dig more into specifics. I'm muted. And that meeting is tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. U.S. Central. So please feel free to join. And Don will be leading, yeah. I think. Okay. <laughs> right on. All right. Well, that was a really nice discussion on a, a variety of, of different things. So I really appreciate the, the feedback and, and everybody's thoughts and all that kind of stuff. So um, have a great day and we'll catch you on the next meeting, wherever that might be. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you.